Quand vous savez moi la peine, ou peut-être ça vous Si moi je vous achète chez moi, ou peut-être ça vous voulez. Si moi je vous fais des trucs, ou peut-être ça vous voulez. Je m'en ai acheté, je m'en ai acheté, je m'en ai acheté, je m'en ai acheté. Good day again, viewers. You are on the field with me, Philip Sidney. Today we are at the Union Propagation Station, which was established many, many moons ago. This place, in fact, was established as a result of the production of cocoa plants. The ministry at the time were pushing cocoa as a project, so here used to be called the Cocoa Center. Since then, the place has been diversified into other crops. Other tree crops like mangoes, avocado pears, citrus and the likes. They are even producing ornamental plants for sale. So today we want to take you through when you buy a plant here, what you should do, the aftercare of that plant. I'm sure you'll understand why when we take you through. And we are hoping that this program will, it's an instructional video to tell you exactly what you should do when you purchase a plant here from the Union Agricultural Station. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as I said before in my intro, we are at the Union Propagation Station and uh, we will take you through the process of propagation here at Union and the reasons why we propagate. Um, there are lots of, lots of plants that cannot be grown by seed and they can only be propagated vegetatively. Okay, so if you do not have seed, obviously you will not be able to produce another plant. So the only way we can do it is either by budding, grafting, you know, we also have approach um, um, grafting. You know, there are many types of, of grafting. We have top working, which we, we did some time um, ago, which we will show you as we continue. But today, I have two grafters here with me who are employed at Union Agricultural uh, Station, the propagation station, and uh, they will take you through the process from the beginning, where we have to go and get rootstock. So, introduce yourself, sir. I'm Jimmy Charlemagne. Okay, and you are, uh, you are you uh, you are the uh, the propagationist. Yeah. Okay. Propag yeah. Okay, and then you are Calixus Joseph. Okay, those two gentlemen here are the ones who are doing the both the grafting. Before we used to do budding, they have now they have you know graduated into 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 grafting. But it's, it's the same process because you, what you're doing is to try and that method to propagate plants so that they can, they can bear very quickly as in the future as we move. So take us through the process, sir. We using, we starting from the seed. So obviously that is lemon. So the reason why we use lemon because it resists from pests and diseases. Okay. So after we burst that seed in, in river sun or sea sun. So you, you sow it in, 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 in river sun, yeah. right? Okay. So that the roots will come out straight. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And after we put it in a bag, make sure you, you dip, like put a thicker stick and a clear hole, and then put the, the seedling yeah, in it. The seedling. Okay. Make sure it's straight. If it have a bend, if the roots bend, yeah, it's going to trap like the the, the food from from, yeah, from from going up. From going yeah. So the, so you, you do not want a bench root. You no. want you want a straight, straight root. Straight root. Okay. So the root the roots must be must be straight, straight because we're dealing with what you call a tap root system. Yes. So it must be straight. Okay. So it, that so that is your your stock. Yeah, my stock. Okay. What, what happens from there? From, and from there, you have to take out all, you have to prune it so that make sure it come up straight because we, need, we want a straight. Beautiful. And make sure it have to be like a pencil size. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. And after. So from there, how, how long does it take from your sowing of your seeds to get to that, to that, to about, the height? About six months. About six months. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Okay, continue. And then. We, we, uh, let me show you the process how to graph now. Right. After you, you pass and you take out all the bottom leaves, make sure you take out all the bottom leaves. Pass. Yep. Mm -hmm. And after that is done, you, you go and select your... Your sign your material. Sign. You okay. The sign material. Uh, sign material. Now, what, what do you, how do you select your sign material? You go on a, uh, on a full grown tree, mm -hmm. make sure it's bearing. Mm -hmm. um, only taking it. Okay. It have to be bearing. Okay. A full bearing tree. Yeah. All right. Okay. And after we use power film. Mm hmm It's a tip. See, you pass the 
the, the, the paraffin on the sand material. Right. To, that's for moisture. And it also prevents the pests. From interfering but, with, yeah. with, with the, 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 the green area? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. And, and what, what's, what's the next process? Cut. All right. A clean cut, mm -hmm. both sides. All right. Like a V cut. All right. Make sure it's clean, make sure it's in the, the center part. All right. And after you split. And that's clear line. You All can right. use any line to tie it up. Okay. So and the reason why we tie it so that no water gets inside it. Beautiful. From time water gets inside it, the same material will, will die. It'll die. Okay. And the, you have to tie it very tight so yeah, that you, you can create tight. that fusion yeah. with the cambium layer and the xylem and phloem. Beautiful. Great. And so, tight. so that is your grafting. Yeah. So, what 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 variety do you have there? That's Washington. Washington Nibble. Nibble yeah. So beautiful. Okay. So we put on Washington and a sour orange. And, and lemon. And a lemon. Yeah. Okay. Before they used to use the sour, sour, sour orange, orange, but they, they don't use that anymore. No. Okay. Why why they don't why they don't? Because it it it, it, it gets disease very quickly. Yeah. yeah very okay. Quickly. All right. So this is resistant to diseases that we. Yes. Beautiful. All right. Okay. So what's the next step? Next step after. You, you, you'll suspect they have, how do you call these? The, those, those are shoots that are growing below, below the, below the, the graft. graft. All right. So, so, and so all, all that's, that's lemon. Yeah, Beautiful. All that's lemon. Okay. So you have to take it out. All right. Now, people, that is very important, eh? Because a lot of people come and they buy plants. And, and years ago, um, when, we, when we were using the, the sour orange stock, we... People bought plants. So, for example, they bought a Washington navel and they go home. And they believe, okay, they have a Washington navel plant. Over the years, they were never taught to remove any growing shoots below the fusion hair. And then it will grow faster than the graft because it is closer from the root system that takes up food. So at the end of the day, it will surpass this. Okay? And of course, you can show us one of, one of those that that this this is the sour, this is the the lime right yeah. the the sour the, the sour orange okay if you if you notice if you notice here is here is your the your your the one that was budded and then here is the 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 sour orange stock that has overtaken and you realize how fast it's growing it has taken over the sweet orange or whatever that you buy so if you bought a grapefruit you bought a sour you bought a, a sweet orange tree this is where it's at and the sour orange will take over. So after two, three years, you harvest your orange and you see the propagation station sold you sour orange. No, they, they did not sell you sour orange. Because the reason why? Because you did not remove those growing shoots below the scion area. And that is why it is important when you plant your plant, check it regularly to ensure that you do not have growing shoots below the fusion of that sweet orange that you have grafted okay so that's the that's one of the things so here what 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 that's that here you have again you know gro a, a, a fully grown ready to, re ready to plant so you have your fully grown plant that you purchased and you, you are taking this plant to be planted but before we plant there's another problem i'm sure of you all know you'll have seen it you'll know how to handle it is the aftercare of the plant you need to check the plant regularly, like I said, for the growing on the shoots. The other thing is pest and disease management. You will realize, some of you will see the, the leaves are black, and the leaves didn't, didn't just turn black overnight. It's because there are insect problems. There may be aphids and they are scale insects. You realize the leaves are curly, and then on top of the leaves, the, which is the upper layer of the leaves, will turn black. That's where you have a fungus called sooty mole. And if that covers the leaves, it will prevent the process of photosynthesis, and then you will not have the, your, your trees producing the fruits that you would require. So you need to spray your plant. So if you want information, then you have to speak to your extension officer who will guide you and to tell you exactly what 
insecticide to use and one, what fungicide to use. Because if you look here, you realize this plant here is diseased, and there are many, many, many types of types of diseases. You have insects, you have um, fungal diseases, and the list goes on. So you need, if the leaves are attacked, you realize the plant will stay stunted. It will not grow to give you that uh, the fruit that you require over time. So you need to take care of this. Okay. So from now we we're going to do the planting. Okay. So we'll show you how to get the plants planted. Okay. We are at the point where you have purchased your plants from the Union Propagation Station. You have taken it to your farm or you have taken it to your backyard. We will show you exactly how to plant that and the reason why some people do not know how to plant a plant or a fruit tree. You realize that the plant has a nylon bag. Now if you, some people do not know they have to remove the nylon bag to plant the plant. Some people have planted plants with the bag and three, four years later, the plant is still stunted and they want to know why. Because the root system has not developed because the, the roots are surrounded in the plastic bag and it has nowhere to go. So we will show you exactly how to plant a plant. So we're going to dig a hole. Okay. About the same depth with the plant that you're going to plant. You can get also some pen manure to first for starters, so that you the plant gets a, a, a very good good start. Okay, so you dig you dig your 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 hole. Okay, and then you tear the, tear the bag. Right, you make sure you remove the bag completely. And if you notice, you realize the soil the the roots are getting ready to be, to be established. If you look at some nice roots, the, the roots are very nice. And then you, you put it in. The most important thing you have to note when you're planting, you do not plant, you realize that the, the soil level in the bag, you do not put more soil to reach up here. You leave it at the same level with the, with the soil that was in the bag, okay? So continue planting, all right? Beautiful. Okay, and you just expose it to, so that you it is the same level with the plant. Okay, and here you have it. Your plant is, is planted. Okay, and then once that happens, in a few more weeks to come, then you if you want to give it your fertilizer, your nitrogen, you can do that, sulfur of ammonia, and then you can give it your NPK. You know, in the next three months, and then you monitor it for pest and disease, diseases. And to ensure that you do not have pests, you do not have any fung fungal um, diseases on your leaves to prevent the manufacturing of your, of your food. And then your plants should be able to give you to bear within a year, a year and six months, and then you are good to go. So here, here you have it, the planting. So that goes for any plant, mangoes, citrus, avocado pears, right? And even, even your ornamental plants that you're planting, you plant it just like this. You do not plant, use the, put too much soil to cover the, the stem of the plant. Or else, if that happens, sometimes it can rot the, the stem. Okay, so this is, as you can see, it's well done. And that should be able to give you a very good plant, good growth, and should be able to bear, bear and give you some good fruits in the coming you know, months to come. Okay, the other thing I would like to mention is we also propagate here, we don't propagate it, in, it, it we actually grow them, that is co coconuts. Coconuts are not grafted, you hear people ask about grafted coconuts, they, you, 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 we do not have grafted coconuts. We have varieties, we have dwarf nuts, it, meaning that the plant, the coconut plant, that variety can bear very early and it can be very short and it can grow. But that doesn't mean over time it will not grow at all, all right? It just tells you that it's called a dwarf nut, it bears very early. So we do not have what they call grafted coconuts, we don't have that. And you hear it all the time, there's nothing called grafted coconuts, all right? It's dwarf nuts. Okay, I just want to 
take you back a bit just to remind you of what was done here by the two gentlemen who are the ones doing the grafting and the propagation of various plants here at Union Station. I want to thank them for being here to uh, show us what they do here and to ensure that we have plants on a regular basis so that you can come in here and buy plants uh, once you you buy a piece of land, you build your house and you want to plant a few plants in your backyard. However, there's another another thing that you should you should be reminded. Not because you see that plant there is short, that you can plant another one two feet away. Right? You need to know the correct distances to plant your fruit trees. Right? For limes is 15 feet apart, for oranges is 20 feet, 20 feet apart, for grapefruit is 25 feet apart. Okay? Because if you plant those plants at five feet apart because you'll be recognized that they're small. At the end of the day, you'll have a jungle in your backyard, okay? And then you, you want to know what to do. Once the plants are pl uh, planted closely, the canopy are going to intertwine with each other, and then you have a problem, you know, when it comes to the amount of fruits to get from those trees. So you plant them at the required spacing, and then you should have a very good production in your backyard. So, gentlemen, I want to thank you for being here and for giving us the assistance. Thank you again, you know, and I'm sure that you will continue to do, you know, assist in producing more plants at Union Station. So thank you for being here. Thank you very much. You've been watching On The Field with me, Philip Sidney. Like I said, we are at the Union Propagation Station where they produce a variety of plants for sale to the public, to farmers, to those landscapers, to you, who just bought a 10,000 square feet of land, you want to build your home and you want to plant plants in your backyard. Feel free to come here at Union Station to purchase those plants. But remember the tips that you heard earlier and you saw what we explained to you. This is what happens at Union and the aftercare of your plant is very important. So I don't want you to come again and say that you purchased sour orange plants from Union. Just remove the growing shoots from below the scion, which will be sour orange or lemon. Once that is out, then you'll have your tree growing to give you the production that you deserve. But before I close, I just want to remember a few things about Union because there's a bit of nostalgia for me. Um, I was trained at Union Regular Station as a cadet officer, and a, a, as a student, in fact. And then here was the place I came to do my practical. And I, I, I became the manager of this station some years later, and I really enjoyed my stint here. But I, wrote, I, want to re, re, I can recall and remember some names that, you know, remain pre predominantly in my mind. People like Mr. Fede, people like um, Matilda Harvey, who worked very hard here, um, Katie Julian, Leona Louis, those are the, the people that I knew when I was here. They were the brothers, and they're the ones who did a lot of work here. The drivers, Mr. Dickinson, Gigi, you know, and the list goes on and on. But those are the names I could remember. I, I don't want to mention too many. Um, maybe I might leave out a lot of people. If I don't mention the names, they might get offended. But I, I, what I can say, they work tirelessly to ensure that the trees around the St. Lucia, they were responsible for the budding and grafting of those trees. So again, thank you for viewing. We'll be back again somewhere in St. Lucia on the field with Philip Sidney. Goodbye. <laughs> Come on, I'm not going to be a good one.